Welcome to Design Spark Ask the Expert, where today we're joined by Eaton in the studio and I have Reese Martin from Eaton. Hi Reese, would you like to say hello to Design Spark? Hi Greg and hello Design Spark. Reese, you've joined us a few times now on Design Spark and today we're here to talk about fuses. We're looking at the automotive charging stations to understand a little bit more about the application of fuses used within those charging facilities. So in terms of the charging levels, what is it we're now seeing within those charging stations? Do you want to take us through and provide a little bit more information on that? Yeah. So, yeah, as you've sort of briefly over discussed, um, we're going to be discussing the FWE fuse range from Eaton Busman today. Um, so the main focus of this fuse was aimed at electrical vehicle chargers, high powered DC chargers, um, so I'll go into a bit of the trends on the electric vehicle charger market throughout the presentation, a uh, bit of an overview on the fuse range and then what's required to correctly specify a fuse um, into, you know, a complex application as well. Great. So let, let's start in the beginning then about application and suitability. Um, would you be able to elaborate on specific applications, for example, where we find the FWE series and just tell us a little bit more about that fuse range? Yeah. So as I briefly discussed, the FWE range was predominantly designed for um, high powered electric vehicle chargers. So we've implemented this into the design to withstand, you know, the high cyclic loading witnessed in um, electric vehicle chargers. But it's not to say that the FWE fuse can only be used in electric vehicle chargers. So I'll go into a bit more information on electric vehicle chargers with the fuses, you know, throughout the presentation. But it's, we can also take a look at other applications where they can be used, such as um, traction applications, DC power conversion, battery energy storage, um, and what we also want to put out there to you know potential customers is although they are you know designed for ev chargers these fuses aren't to be used within sort of automotive applications where the application is on the road um, but they can be used in off-road applications such as mining machinery um, electric bulldozers electric diggers um, electric dumper trucks um, then we've also got the traction applications. I think I've discussed that already. We've got battery energy storage systems as well. Um, so although it's not specifically designed for battery energy storage, um, if you work with our applications engineers team who are based in the UK, um, we can go through and see if the FWE fuse is a good fit. Um, and then just, yeah, any any other application where DC power is used, you know, there's a potential where you can use this FWE fuse range there. Fantastic. And in terms of the range depth, what is it we're looking at with the FWE? Can you just explain what's available? Yep. So currently the range goes from 70 amps up to 600 amps, um, 1000 volts DC and 100 uh, KA braking capacity. So... On the back of this, we are looking to widen the portfolio. Uh, so we're looking to work down to amperages of 15 up to 50 amps. So this will be in a slightly smaller uh, package of fuse, um, looking at a 10 by 38 cylindrical style, 14 by 51 cylindrical fuse. Um, and then we've got you know the current range, which is based on a North American cylindrical body. Great. So that's interesting to hear. You were obviously talking about their use not only being for charging stations, but things like uh, battery energy storage systems. You're also talking about mining as an example. So in terms of reliability in harsh conditions, that's a consideration that you need to look at when you're selecting fuses. So what is it you can highlight about their performance, for example, under extreme conditions like temperature cycling? Um, can you just give us a little bit more information on that where they're using those particular applications? Yeah, so if we take um, an electric vehicle charger, for example, so you might have someone come in with a nice shiny new electric vehicle, plug it in, you're going to see a huge ramp up in current. They might charge it for 20 minutes, 
at that full load current and then as soon as they unplug the car you know you've got a huge drop in current and with that you get sort of a, a temperature cycle so see as the t uh, current increases you know you're seeing an increase in temperature through the fuse so if you're thinking a busy car park people are queuing up to charge their electric vehicles you're going to get you know this long cycle of, of cyclic loading temperature cycling and so on so within the design of the fuse you know this has been implemented um, as best as possible into the element design to withstand as much cyclic loading as possible so around this, we, we also need to implement in some derating factors as well. So as good as the fuse is and how well it's been designed for these applications, we also need to factor in uh, other parameters of the application. So again, back to electric vehicle chargers, um, th there's a bit of information that we'd need to be able to specify one of the FWE fuses into your electric vehicle application. So this could be things like ambient temperature of where the application is. So is it in a hot climate? This can have an impact and you'd need a derating factor applied to the fuse. It can be buzz bar connection size, force cooling if it's in an enclosure, you know, force cooling helps with the temperature of the fuse. You've got the max continuous load current and then also you need to factor in the cyclic loading that you're going to see as well so with all this we factor this into one of our equations and it will spit out a derating uh, factor so for example you you might have a, an output of 400 amps on your charger but when you take into account your derating factor applied to this you may need to up specify your fuse to a 600 amp fuse um, and this is purely to get the best protection as possible and the longevity of the fuse. So you want the fuse to act quick, but also last as long as possible. Um, so if, if you do come across, um, you know, high temperature cycling, the fuse has not been correctly specified, you will get um, fatiguing on the fuse element. Uh, as the fuse heats up and cools, over time you're going to get these microscopic stress fractures and eventually you're going to probably see a nuisance trip so the fuse has, has worked basically but not when it should have um, so by specifying and working with our you know applications engineers to correctly specify the fuse you're going to get you know a long longevity of fuse no nuisance tripping and the best possible um, fusing characteristics in whatever your, your application is. Yeah, I really appreciate you taking the time to explain this to us. And I think it's probably an area where people overlook is the characteristic of a fuse. I mean, for many of us, a fuse is a piece of equipment which is obviously there to protect the user and the equipment itself. So it's interesting to hear what you're saying there about things like temperature cycling and those stress factors. And I think you kind of touched on this within the conversation. But I would imagine that there's a lot of these fuses are installed within closed equipment. So are we talking about ventilation, thermal management, temperature compensation, things like derating factors, for example? I just wondered maybe if there's a couple of notes that you could uh, provide around that kind of activity. Yeah, so I think the best bit of advice, you know, if you are in, looking at designing an application, um, we can put it as a link below this video, but we've got a really nice in-depth um, application guide. So this goes through all the factors that will determine your derating on the fuse um, with force calling being that. So a lot of these are in the form of a table, very easy to understand and read and then implement that into choosing the correct fuse. But on the back of that, you know, I would advise everyone, if you are working on something, don't leave the fusing till last because a lot of people like you say underestimate the importance of a fuse um, but with applications becoming more and more power dense you've got you know these huge fault currents possible fault currents now being um, there in in the application so putting a fuse in there you know it's the best way of protecting both the people around the application and your equipment against any fault caused by you know, a short circuit or a high current fault. 
thanks yeah that, that that's great um you know just those little kind of design tips and considerations for users to me i think are obviously worth their weight uh in gold so you know you say don't leave this to the end of your development think about it up front track everything in that you're designing yeah so that's really great kind of advice there so just moving on in terms of the fuse itself uh fuse selection um you provided some guidance notes there but what are the things to look for? Where do you see common mistakes being made in fuse selection, for example? So it, it, it purely is around the, the derating. People don't understand or uh, they underestimate the amount of derating that they probably need to apply sometimes. So like, like I said, if, if you work with our applications team, um, they, they can give you the best advice, best information um, to properly specify the fuse. Um, this is going to ensure that you're not going to see nuisance tripping. You're going to get a long lifespan out of the fuse um, because, again, you know, electric vehicle chargers are going to be dotted hundreds of miles all around the country. And the maintenance needed on those uh, chargers, as an example, um, you know, it, it's going to take a lot of manpower out there to constantly be going around. And if you put the wrong fuse in, carries on blowing got the cost of the fuse, the cost of getting someone out there to replace it. So this, you know, just emphasizing the importance on correctly uh, determining the fuse needed for your charging application in this example. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously having experience from many of colleagues internally uh, within this business uh, when they're coming into the office, you know, for example, if they get to the charging station that they, you know, they come off the motorway to the charging station one of the charges is down. Um, so, you know, it could be for simple things. Um, so it's really interesting to hear about, you know, like the having the correct fuse, uh, voltage rating, current rating and braking capacity, temperature rating and those characteristics. All the things that you said earlier about fuse selection criteria that need to be managed up front. But there's, there's also an area where, you know, where do we see these applications going for these particular fuse types. I'm just wondering if there's any trends and additional activity that you're seeing that you may want to share with us. Yeah. So again, there's a lot of this um, discussion has been about electric vehicle chargers, key focus point for this fuse range. Um, there's a lot of EU regulation, European regulatory uh, projects being put in place um, to expand on the use of electric vehicles, but also to support that you've got the electric vehicle charging network as well. So we've obviously factored this into account. There's going to be, you know, continuous development on electric vehicle chargers, getting more and more power dense, higher voltages used, more current use. So by having sort of the expanded portfolio that, you know, we're currently working on, um, but also designing the fuse to a thousand volts DC. A lot of the cases at the minute are 800 volts DC, but you know we are moving on to a thousand volts DC already. So with us implementing that thousand volt DC rating on this fuse, you know we're just providing that future proof um, piece, you know, to use there in people's application. Fantastic. Reese, I really do appreciate you taking the time to talk to DesignSpark today, particularly about fuses within the charging industry and expressing, you know, the the depth with the uh, FWE range. I do sometimes think, you know, that the fuse can be considered as a simple product when in fact it's not that simple at all. It's been designed to act in a various way. And these characteristics that come into effect um, all need to be taken into consideration. And as you say, for example, you know, nuisance tripping can be a, an issue. So, you know, fuse selection based on the characteristics of the fuse is really important. And I think it's people important that they understand that the technology behind a fuse, but also be comfortable in the knowledge that they're selecting the correct fuse for their application. So I thank you for your time and sharing your insight today on fuse and fuse technology. And I hope we can have you on DesignSpark again sometime soon. Yeah, thank you for your time, Greg.